Nehemiah Rez, welcome Mr. Chad. Good afternoon everyone. Um, uh, this paper is more of an observation, something different from what we've been practicing in the UK. So I thought I must share the experience and some different ways of practicing regarding external ventricular drainage. So uh, most of the patients belong to my colleague Shashank Joshi and Rajan Shah, who have been practicing in India for a good 20 odd years. And it's from two institutes which are corporate hospitals in the city of Mumbai. So this is the hospital that I work in for the last two years. Uh, it's a corporate hospital uh, with, the corp with the collaboration from uh, the municipal corporation. Uh, being on sabbatical leave from Belfast Trust for the last two years. Uh, this hospital is quite large, 1,500 beds, 36 operating suits, 200 <coughs> ICU beds, and some six, seven, seven consultants, including full-time and others. So the external ventricular drainage, as we know, has inherent complications such as CSF leakage, infections, blockage, clinking, thrombosis, to mention a few. And it does need to be replaced <coughs> uh, to minimize the risk of infection once in a while. So what the current study was just an observational study, an audit, to evaluate the efficacy of using what they've been doing for years, a combination of Omaya Reservoir and Port Nidal as an alternative method of standard to standard EVDs. On the left, what you see is the standard EVDs that we are all familiar with. And Omaya Reservoir, we are used to using it for intrathical, as an intrathical drug delivery device mainly. Um, So we have had 38 patients over a span of four years with equal male to female ratio and age range right from infancy to uh, 80s. And the standard pathologies, including intraventricular hemorrhage, subarachnoid hemorrhage, tuberculous meningitis, not uh, quite common in India, and post-surgical hydrocephalus. And the parameters that they had observed were blockage, infection, hemorrhage, and dislodgement of the catheter. And two weeks were followed up uh, uh, after the insertion of the drain. So I'm not going to repeat how my reservoir is inserted. As we all are aware, it's a very much standard way of inserting the external ventricular drain and connecting a reservoir to it. But what they do next is instead of connecting it to a standard EVD, they connect a 23-24 gauge port needle transcutaneously in the reservoir and then that's connected to a local made CSF collection system. I'll show you a few videos, just an example. Uh, a consent has been obtained for showing these videos. Uh, can we show the video please? So this patient already has a Mamaya reservoir inserted in. All it needs is a cleaning, local cleaning of the, uh, the site, nothing more. After that, a port needle is taken and it's inserted as we see. We have to ensure that the needle is right in the chamber of the Omaya reservoir and the CSF starts to flow in. So we have to follow it up. And you can see the locally made CSF collection system where the CSF has started to drain. So they use this as a system of standard, ex as a standard external ventricular drainage. So, to summarize, out of 38 patients, there were one patient with infection. I know infection is a very controversial, what we call as infection. But what they have said is infection is a clinical picture of a frank infection with CSF growing organisms necessitating removal of the, the system. Blockage of the system in two patients, minor hemorrhage from the port middle size in two patients, CSF leakage from the port middle size, none. Wound complications of Omaya insertion, none. Accidental dislodgement of the port needle from the Omaya reservoir, two and injuries associated with insertion of the port needle, either to the patient or to healthcare staff, reported none. 
Well, I find that there are some disadvantages of these techniques, to mention a few. I think there's more hardware in the drainage system compared to the standard external ventricular drainage. So more likely to block than conventional EDDs, especially if there's a heavy blood load or CSF <coughs> contains high proteins, such as TB meningitis. There is a real risk of dislodgement of the needle and needle stick injury either to the patient and to the healthcare workers, especially when these patients are often obtended, restless, and sometimes unconscious. And I felt that this was less effective in clearing out blood in cases of intraventricular hemorrhage. Although I don't have a proof, we didn't study that as a parameter. That was purely my impression. There were some advantages of the system. CSF drainage can be undertaken for prolonged periods, probably longer periods than a standard standalone EVD uh, would do. The Omai reservoir can be left in situ as a long-term safety wall afterwards, as many of the patients went on to have VP shunts afterwards. CSF drainage was possible in peripheral hospitals or by non-neurosurgeons, either by the nurses or by the intensive care staff or by the junior doctors. Actually, the video that I showed was a <coughs> equivalent of a foundation in training working in the ICU, post in the ICU, and uh, she put in the needle. <coughs> Installation of chemotherapeutic agents, such as anti-tuberculous agents, antibiotics, thrombolytics, or anti-cancer drugs, can be easily facilitated at the same time of drainage. The port needle can be very easily changed, doesn't cost much, and takes only a couple of minutes. I find that as an excellent tool for intermittent CSF drainage. So rather than having to block the standard EVD and then waiting for the CSF leak to occur or the patient to deteriorate, we found that an excellent tool. Just disconnect, take the port needle out and wait for the events to happen. I thought there was less risk of pericatheter leakage after blockage or clamping of the drain. Infection was uncommon and we felt that this was more cost effective. To summarize, from this short, small study, an audit essentially, we felt that the technique of external ventricular drainage using OMI reservoir and the port needle as a CSA drainage system appears to reduce inherent complications associated with conventional EVDs and is more cost effective. Of course, this is a very small sample size and a single or two center studies uh, involving three surgeons. So further studies are needed if we were to evaluate its efficacy uh, in the longer and larger sectors. Thank you very much. We're a bit short time, apart from the fact that everybody <coughs> really probably wants to work in that hospital at the very much. Uh, I think I've got time for one question. Then we've got one. What's the price difference issue between Omaya and EVD? Well, the price that we will get in the UK is significantly higher than what you get in India. For example, a standard metronic in shunt. In India. Or India. It's India. about 20% of what an EVD the system would be. Which is expensive? The Omaya is cheaper. Okay. The whole system comes to about 20, 25%. Sorry, it turns out to be 20, 25% cheaper than the, the standard EVD. Okay, okay. thank you. Right, so next we're going to hear some more about DVDs uh, from King.